Hello and good morning and welcome to our next lesson in our cyber fundamentals dealing with cyber, secur cyber security with the micro bits. This is part five, wireless packets. So we've been doing some really cool things in our previous lessons. We've looked at uh, being able to send radio signals and being able to uh, communicate with other micro bits using those radio signals, basically how texting works. Um, in our last lesson, we looked at taking information and storing it within a dictionary. Uh, and so that the micro bit knew that this word means this information. Kind of like if I open a dictionary, I can see, okay, this word means this definition. We assigned definitions to words very similar to how we do variables, but we're able to assign uh, alternating information for those definitions. So what we're going to be doing, looking at today is... When we were texting, uh, we were able to send words or phrases from one microbit to another using uh, our microbit's Bluetooth capability. We call it radio, but it's actually Bluetooth. Now we're going to look at being able to send uh, wireless packets. So let's go ahead. Um, so the uh, tutorial shows how to make microbits exchange data with one another. Uh, the approach is similar to how apps and servers exchange data with packets containing key value pairs. So uh, if you're playing a game on your microbit, or, or, or let's say you're watching TikTok videos, or you're watching Facebook, or, or you're looking at Facebook, or you're doing something else with a snapogram, I know. Um, what's happening is your phone is sharing data with the servers from that company. So one of the biggest arguments going on right now is TikTok, um, is that TikTok servers are actually located in China. And they're worried that the servers in China are taking information from our phones and sharing it with China, blah, 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 blah. But we sure already share a lot of large amount of information with companies here in the United States. And those companies take our data and sell it to people in order to help with marketing purposes. So. It's all crazy, but we're going to make our microbit do that. Uh, thanks to MicroPython's dictionary and string features, this easy and powerful technique takes a couple lines of code. So originally, if we did not know dictionary programming or string programming, it would do a lot. It would take a lot more to do. But because the more we know about programming, the smaller our programs are able to get. Okay, so if you don't already have it. Please make sure you have your microbit and your download cord. You can go ahead and plug your download cord into your mic, uh, into the computer. Um, we will not need the battery, so please do not plug the batteries in. Uh, all of it will be done within the serial, just like in the previous lessons. So, I'm going to move my face. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to write MicroPython scripts that make microbit modules send and receive packet data containing key value pairs. Your scripts that receive messages will be able to access values based on the keys, copy them to variables, and use them to calculate, decide, repeat, and other familiar programming tasks to make your apps work. Okay, so we'll receive the message. Based off what it receives, it'll be able to respond to that based off that. Okay, so, so Devices typically use packets to exchange data. Packets can contain multiple pieces of information, including headers, trailers, sequence numbers, checksums, and other features. Um, if you think about it, when you go onto Amazon, or you go onto eBay, or you go something like that, and you type in the credit card information, it's sending your uh, credit card information as a packet of a data, and it's sending that to the company to process your credit card information before returning it. Uh, so you're going to create a countdown timer in which you get to start this number and message to display afterwards. And then in this activity, you'll be able to packetize the start number and ending message before sending it wirelessly. So we're going to be able to send the message and receive the message. So first program is going to be uh, sending the message, okay? So y'all probably have an idea of where this is going to go. We're going to create a program for sending, create a program for receiving, and then be able to take those two programs and bring them together, very similar to how we did the uh, texting. So here's where we're going to start. I am looking at the Python program. I am going to delete everything after the asterisk, and I'm going to call this one send um, radio 
packet. And I'm going to delete everything after line two. Okay. Now, remember at any point, if I'm going too fast, all you need to do is just pause the video and then do whatever programming you need to do and then press, press, press play when you're ready to go. That's always fun. So uh, since we're going to be using the Bluetooth capability on our micro bit, also known as the radio, we need to make sure that our um, micro bit is ready to speak radio. Uh, so micro bit import asterisk is the language. Import radio is going to be our dialect. It's going to be very specific. Uh, we're going to be talking about radios today. Okay, so I'm now in line six. I'm going to hide that. I'm going to hide that. I'm now on line six, and I'm going to turn the radio dot on. Okay, because remember, just because I get into the car, or I open the door to a car, the radio does not automatically turn on. I have to turn the radio on, and that's going to be the first thing my program is going to do. Okay, and then it's going to radio dot config. In fact, I'm going to get rid of some of these spaces. Radio dot config channel equals seven. So I've set my micro bit to Bluetooth channel seven and then length equals 50. Okay. And then we're going to sleep for one second or 1000 milliseconds. Okay. Now, after sleep, I'm going to do while true. The W and while is lowercase. The T and true is capitalized. Hit enter. Text is going to equal input. Enter countdown start. Okay. So it's going to ask you this question in the uh, serial port. It's going to say enter countdown start. And then whatever you enter, it's going to input that your answer as the variable text, okay? Now, because you're picking a number, you're picking a number that you want your countdown number to start. In fact, I can even go here. Oops, there we go. Start number, okay? Because I'm working with a number, I need to make sure that my micro bit program understands that it is a number. So I'm gonna do value equals integer text, okay? So now, now it's text is a number, it's registering as a number and saving it as the term value, okay? So now message equals input, enter message after countdown. So what message do you want it to send after it counts down. So if you pit five right here for your enter countdown number, we'll go five, four, three, two, one, zero, and then it will send whatever message you want it to send. And then dictionary, I can spell dictionary correctly, there we go, equals, and then it's going to be curly bracket, curly bracket. So this is what's right next to the P by holding shift and then the two next buttons next to P. Dictionary, open staple, apostrophe, start, apostrophe, close staple, equals value. So I've now taken the value, which is right here, which is an integer that I entered for the countdown timer. And I've saved it now in the dictionary as start. And now I'm going to have after equals message. So what I answered here, enter message after countdown, has been saved as message, and I'm going to save it in my dictionary as the term after. And then I want it to packet equals string dictionary. Okay? So instead of sending each message individually, send this, then send this, I've saved both of those things inside of my dictionary and then I'm sending the dictionary, okay? So I'm not sending things individually, send this thing next, wait, send this thing. I am sending everything together to another person's serial, okay? <coughs> Sorry. 
excuse me. I'm going to hit enter a couple of times. And I'm going to print. Send. Oops. I don't know why I did that. Sorry. Send. Colon. Post office parentheses, comma. Packet. So then it's going to send what you wanted it to send. It's going to show you what you wanted it to send. And then I want it to radio dot send the packet and then print. Boom. Okay. So I'm going to connect my micro bit. I'm connected. I'm going to flash and I'm going to look at my micro bit to see if I have a line error. At this time, I do not have a line error. So I'm going to do open serial and I'm going to do eight. Uh, okay. Send after this is all a dream, start at eight and then enter countdown number and it's going to start it again. Now, you should be able to team up with someone else in the room, but we'll get to that program in a second. This is to send. Now we need to have a micro bit to receive. So let's scroll down here. This is going to be our receiver program. Now, of course, I'm not going to delete any of this. I'm going to right click this tab. <coughs> I'm going to duplicate. This one we called send radio packet. This one will be called receive radio packet. Delete everything after line three. A lot of it's going to start very similar. Import radio, radio dot on, radio dot config, channel equal seven, comma length equal fifty. Sleep 1000. Okay. So that is how our program started last time. Now I'm going to do while true. And I'm going to do packet equals radio dot receive. Oops. Okay. So basically, whatever message it receives, it's going to save it in our micro bit as the term packet. So we're sending it as packet, and now we're going to save it as a packet on the new micro bit. And we want it to. If packet is not none, the capital N, that means if you have the word packet, not none means if you have the word packet, what I want it to do is print receive packet, print parse. Dictionary equals eval packet. So I want it to evaluate what is in the packet. What what do you see inside the packet? Well, we should have the term start and after saved inside that packet. Okay. It's almost like if I opened up a folder and I saved folders within that folder. Okay. So basically what I just told it to do is, okay, dictionary, open this packet. Okay. And value... It's going to equal what's in the dictionary, open staple, start, close staple. So you're going to save whatever is um, in the dictionary start. You're going to save that as value. Message is going to be dictionary, open staple, after, close staple. So it's going to take... Uh, the after part of the message, save it as the term message. Okay. Print value equals value. Print message equals message. Oops. Message, comma, 
backslash, which is, where's my backslash? There it is, all the way by P. But, come on, there we go, backsplash. In. Okay. While value is greater than or equal to zero, because remember, we're telling it to count down. Uh, so while there is a number, we want it to print that value. Sleep for 1,000 milliseconds or one second. And then take value and subtract it by one. Okay, And then it will go back up here, right here. Is it still greater or equal to zero? Yes. Da -da 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 -da. It'll run through that process. And then after it runs through all that, I want it to print my message and then print done. Okay. Now, me with my programming, I'm going to go back to this program. Um, I like to add sleeps for half a second after every print and then a sleep. I'm going to keep that as a sleep 500 there. Normally, I would keep it as a um, sleep uh, 5,000 milliseconds at the end of every program. However, it's asking me another question. So here, I'm going to do sleep 500, sleep 500, sleep 500, sleep 500. Okay. Awesome. Sleep 500. Boom. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect my micro bit from here, connect my micro bit to the received program, and I'm going to flash it. I'm going to see if we have any line errors. Looks like I do not have any line errors. However, if I go to my serial, nothing's in my serial because all it's doing is it's trying to receive the message. Okay, I only have one micro bit and one computer here right now which means it cannot receive any message. <coughs> so this blink, this screen will stay blank the whole time until a message is received, okay? Now, if I go, if I disconnect this micro bit, connect, flash, okay, open serial. This has stuff come up because I've told it to actually print messages Nine. Boom. So send after I hope no one can hear it, read this. Start at nine. Okay. Now it's going to ask me to send it again. Now, um, you should have people at your table that you're teamed up with. If you want to be able to send people back and forth just to those people, then you change your channel. Okay. So if um, if I have two seventh graders or two eighth graders at the same table, they would set their channel number to the same channel, and a different table would set it to a different channel. Uh, so I want you and your partner at your table to pick a number between one, and just stick between one and twenty, and make sure no one else is using that number. Change that to your channel number right there, and boom. And then for the receiving program, again, make sure that you change that number and see if y'all can send messages back and forth. Now, right now, you're sending a countdown timer and then sending a message that appears after the countdown timer has completed, okay? So this is not just about sending text messages. What we're doing right now is we're taking information, storing them within a basically a folder, sending that folder and then telling the microbit how to open that folder and what to read what's inside of it. So we're taking information, putting it inside of a folder, sending it to another microbit, informing that microbit how to open it and how to understand the information inside so that it can actually enact that information. Okay? So, verifies that the receiver microbit completes the countdown, displays the message. So, here, uh, their countdown timer was five. Their message was liftoff. 
send after is lift off, start is five, and then it asks the question again. And here it says receive after lift off, start five, parse four, three, two, one, zero, lift off. Okay, so you and your partner should have that screen going um, as long as y'all have the same channel that you are set to. Okay, so turns on the radio, waits one second before sending data to your terminal, enters a forever loop. That's what while true is, gets the values from the terminal that you entered, creates a dictionary with the key value pairs start and after, and sends the dictionary as a packet, prints in the terminal also. And then here, Waits on, uh, turns on the radio, waits one for a second before uh, sending data to the terminal, enters a forever loop, waits for the packet, prints the packet in the terminal, breaks the packet, separate between start and after key values, and then runs through the countdown timer. <coughs> so what we're going to do now is we are going to do some uh, more programs. Uh, the previous script has a one second delay in the countdown. Uh, we're going to have the transmitter microbit ask for a time between the counts and add this input to the dictionary, send in the packet. The receiver microbit should count down with a specific speed of input time. So we're going to make it go faster or make it go slower. So I'm going to right click this. I'm going to duplicate. So this is radio packet count down speed, okay, Leave everything after line three, we're going to turn the radio dot on, oops, sorry, nope, I missed something, we're going to import radio, and then we're going to turn the radio on, radio dot config, channel equal seven, length equal 50 sleep 1000 so this starts off the same way the other programs have also while true text input enter countdown start number Okay, same as our previous program all the way over here. And then value equals integer text. So the answer to that is being saved as text. Text should be a number. So it's going to save that number as the term value. So text equals, because we've, we've already replaced what text is, so we can use text again. Text input Enter millisecond time between counts number, okay? So now, how many milliseconds to, between you want to count? One millisecond, 1,000 milliseconds would be one second at a time. We're going to say that as text, but since it's a number, we're going to say, okay, that's milliseconds, integer text, okay? Now, we're going to take our message equals input enter message after countdown okay dictionary so we're turning on our dictionary okay with curly bracket curly bracket and we're going to do dictionary Open staple, start, equals value, dictionary, time, equals milliseconds. So if I have what time? And dictionary, after, equals whatever our message is. So very similar to the previous program that we were writing earlier. Okay. Packet equals string, whatever the dictionary 
value is. I want it to print send. To the wrong button. There we go. The packet. So what is what is it that I'm sending? Radio dot send the packet. So I actually wanted to send the packet and then print the boom. Okay. Uh, and again, for me, I'm going to go here. I'm going to do sleep 500. Sleep 500. I'm going to, oops. I know. I'm going to disconnect the micro bit here. Connect the micro bit here. And flash it. We're going to check for line errors. Have no line errors on my screen. Open serial. Boom. I can close serial. I'm going to refresh that. Enter a countdown start number. Okay. Five. Five. Enter millisecond time between count number. Um, I'm going to do five. Enter a message after countdown. Five. So it's going to send. Uh, timer for five, five milliseconds, the message five, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So now what we need to be able to do is write a program to where our micro bit actually takes the information, the milliseconds, and actually adapts it, okay? So I'm going to close serial. I'm going to disconnect it. I'm going to right-click this. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to rename this up here at the top. Send. Radio packet countdown speed send. Right. I'm going to just highlight all of this because I know it's going to be the same. Boom. But this one's going to be called receive. Okay, so I copied uh, my first couple of lines there. I pasted them here. And now we're going to say, okay, packet equals radio dot receive. Okay. If packet is not none, again, capital N on none, then I want it to print receive, comma, packet, print parse. Okay. Now I want you, okay, okay, dictionary. What I need for you to do is I need you to eval or open up that packet you just received. Okay. And then I want you to break everything down. Okay. Value. I need you to take value, look in the dictionary and whatever it says for start. I want you to save it as value, okay? Oh, also dictionary, I want you to take milliseconds and look in the dictionary and save that as time, or whatever the definition for time is in the dictionary, save it also for milliseconds. And message, that's going to be whatever is in the dictionary for the term after. Okay. And then I want it to, here I have print, so sleep 500. Now I'm back here at the bottom on line 18. Print value equals to you and then because I did a print I'm gonna do a sleep 500 print milliseconds equals MS print oops forgot to do a print I'm gonna do a sleep 500 print message equals whatever the message is. OK. 
Okay. Sleep 500. And then while value is greater than or equal to zero, so if it's counting down, I want it to print the value I want it to sleep for milliseconds. Value equals value minus one. And then print message print. Okay. Sleep 500. Okay. So now what I've told it to do is, okay, going back to the beginning here. If you received a packet, I want you to tell me what you received and what does the packet say. Then I want you to take the dictionary and I want you to open up that folder, dictionary, and then take all the files in there. The file that's labeled as start, I want you to take that now and label it as value. The, def the file labeled time, I want you to label that as ms or milliseconds. The, uh, the file labeled as after, I want you to save that now as message. Then I want you to print the value is, what is it? Wait half a second, print. Okay, the milliseconds is this many milliseconds. Wait half a second. The message is this message. Wait half a second. And then it's going to start counting down. So whatever number you sent it, and then it's going to be waiting however many milliseconds you told it. So if I told it five milliseconds, it's going to go really quick through it subtracting one each time and then once it gets to zero or less than zero or negative number it's going to print the message and it's going to wait half a second okay so i'm going to connect my micro bit here <coughs> i'm going to flash it i do not get a line error and if i go to my serial nothing's in my serial and the reason nothing's in my serial is because i have not received a message okay so uh, let's go back to our PowerPoint real quick. Yep. Just did that. And we just did that. Yay! Okay. So what that means is we need to talk about uh, what needs to be turned in now into Google Classroom. Okay. So I am now looking at this program right here. So this will be screenshot number one, is this program right here, okay? What I'm looking at on my screen right now, uh, we need to have um, that turned in, okay? So that is going to be screenshot number one. Screenshot number two, oops, let me disconnect this. Screenshot number two, is I want to see you answer your three questions or your two questions, okay? So this right here will be screenshot number two, okay? You following along? I hope so. Screenshot number three is going to be your receive program. I bet you see where I'm going to go. Screenshot number four will be a message that you have received in your serial, okay? Now, continuing on, picture number five will be your radio packet countdown speed send. Picture number six will be your answer to the questions. Okay, so this is what I should see, but with your own information, that's picture number six. And then finally, picture number seven is your program, this right here. And picture number eight 
will be a message that you received using this program, okay? So that means you're gonna have to work with somebody in the classroom or at your group to get these eight pictures done, okay? So I'm looking for eight pictures turned in. I'm looking forward to all eight pictures. If you're confused about something or if you wanna know something, please feel free to enter it in as a private message in the classroom. Please do not be doing all the public messages or getting off topic or showing pictures of cats. We really don't need to see all that. So uh, I should be returning on November 9th. I'm looking forward to returning. I do miss you guys and gals. I miss all of y'all. So I will see you on November 9th. Remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll talk to y'all later. Au revoir.